Welcome, friends, to the heartwarming story of an elderly woman whose act of kindness changed the lives of a young mother and her daughter forever. Enjoy the story. The morning sun cast long shadows across the weathered porch of Margaret Wilson's farmhouse. At 73, Margaret stood in the doorway, her arthritis-gnarled hands clutching a worn leather suitcase. Her faded blue eyes, still sharp despite the years, took in every detail of the only home she'd known for the past five decades. The peeling white paint, the creaky floorboards, the ancient rocking chair where she'd spent countless evenings watching the sunset. Each sight sent a pang through her heart. But social security checks only stretched so far, and the nursing home was waiting. Well, old girl, Margaret muttered to herself, her voice quavering. I reckon it's time. She stepped onto the porch, wincing as her hip protested the movement. The key trembled in her hand as she locked the door for the last time. For a moment she stood there, paralyzed by the finality of it all. Then, with a deep breath, Margaret bent down slowly and placed the key under an old tin can on the porch steps. It was a habit from simpler times, when neighbors looked out for each other, and locked doors were more suggestion than necessity. Someone might need it more than me she whispered, a tear slipping down her wrinkled cheek. Straightening up with effort, Margaret grasped her walking stick and began the slow journey down the gravel driveway. Each step felt like a goodbye, to the towering oak tree she'd climbed as a girl, to the flower beds she'd tended with loving care, to the memories of a life well lived. As she reached the end of the driveway, Margaret turned for one last look. The morning light bathed the old farmhouse in a golden glow, as if nature itself was bidding her farewell. Goodbye, old friend, she murmured. Thanks for the memories. With that, Margaret Wilson squared her shoulders and set off down the dusty country road, her walking stick tapping out a steady rhythm on the asphalt. The sun climbed higher in the sky as Margaret made her way to the bus stop. It was only a mile from her home, but to her aching joints, it might as well have been a marathon. Sweat beaded on her forehead, and her breath came in short gasps. Lord, have mercy, she panted, leaning heavily on her walking stick. I'm not as spry as I used to be. As she approached the familiar green bench that served as the local bus stop, Margaret's eyes widened in dismay. The bench was occupied by three teenage boys, their baggy jeans and backward caps a stark contrast to her floral dress and sensible shoes. For a moment, Margaret hesitated. In her day, young people respected their elders. But times had changed, and she wasn't sure what to expect. Gathering her courage, Margaret approached the bench. Excuse me, boys, she said, her voice wavering slightly. I don't suppose you'd mind if an old lady rested her feet for a spell? To her surprise, the boys immediately sprang up. No problem, ma'am, said the tallest one, gesturing to the bench. Please, have a seat. Yeah, we were just leaving anyway, added another, nudging his friends. As Margaret sank gratefully onto the bench, the third boy asked, You waiting for the bus to town, ma'am? Margaret nodded, touched by their unexpected kindness. Yes, I am. Thank you kindly. The boys exchanged glances, then the tall one spoke up again. Mind if we wait with you? Make sure you get on okay? Tears pricked at Margaret's eyes. I'd like that very much, she said softly. For the next twenty minutes, Margaret found herself regaling the boys with stories from her youth. Tales of sock hops and drive-in movies, of her late husband Jack, and the day he proposed right there on her daddy's front porch. When the bus finally rumbled into view, the boys helped Margaret to her feet and assisted her with her bag. You take care now, Mrs. Wilson, said the tall boy as she climbed the steps. Yeah, and don't forget to kick some butt at bingo, called another, earning a chuckle from Margaret. As the bus pulled away, Margaret waved at the boys through the window. Her heart felt a little lighter, buoyed by this unexpected encounter. Maybe, she thought, there was still some good left in this changing world after all. The bus lurched and swayed as it made its way down the winding country roads towards the city. Margaret sat near the front, her bag clutched tightly in her lap, her walking stick propped against the seat beside her. As fields gave way to suburbs and then to towering buildings, Margaret felt increasingly out of place. The city had always made her nervous. Too many people. Too much noise. Too little of the simple kindness she'd known all her life. 
You all right there, ma'am? The bus driver's gruff voice startled her from her reverie. Margaret managed a weak smile. Oh, yes, just taking it all in. The driver nodded sympathetically. First time in the big city? No, Margaret sighed. But it might as well be. Everything's changed so much. As the bus approached the station, Margaret steeled herself for the challenge ahead. Getting off the bus would be harder than getting on, especially with her bag and walking stick. To her surprise, a young woman in a business suit stood up as the bus slowed. Here, she said, holding out her hand, let me help you. With the woman's assistance, Margaret made it down the steps safely. She turned to thank her helper, but the woman had already disappeared into the crowd. Standing on the busy sidewalk, Margaret felt overwhelmed. The nursing home had arranged for someone to meet her, but in this sea of unfamiliar faces, how would she ever find them? Just then, a voice called out, Mrs. Wilson? Margaret Wilson? Margaret turned to see a kind-faced woman in scrubs waving at her. Relief washed over her as she waved back. That's me, she called. I'm Margaret Wilson. As the woman approached, Margaret took a deep breath. This was it, the moment her old life truly ended and her new one began. With a silent prayer for strength, she stepped forward to meet her future. The bus station bustled with activity as Margaret followed the nurse, whose name tag read Sarah, through the crowded terminal. The noise and commotion were overwhelming, and Margaret found herself longing for the quiet of her farmhouse. We'll just get you checked in at the home, Mrs. Wilson, Sarah was saying. Then we can get you settled in your new room. Margaret nodded absently, her attention caught by a young woman and a little girl huddled in a corner. The woman's face was streaked with tears, while the child clung to her, wide-eyed and frightened. Oh my, Margaret murmured. Sarah, do you see those two over there? They look like they could use some help. Sarah glanced over, her expression sympathetic but resigned. I'm sure someone will assist them, Mrs. Wilson. We really should be going. But Margaret couldn't shake the feeling that she needed to do something. I'm sorry, dear, but I just can't leave without checking on them. It'll only take a moment. Before Sarah could protest, Margaret was already making her way towards the pair, her walking stick tapping out a determined rhythm on the tile floor. Excuse me? Margaret said gently as she approached. I couldn't help but notice you seem to be in some distress. Is there anything I can do to help? The young woman looked up, startled. Oh, no, we're fine, she said quickly, wiping at her eyes. Just, just waiting for our bus. But the little girl tugged at her mother's sleeve. Mommy, I'm hungry, she whispered. Margaret's heart clenched. Without hesitation, she opened her bag and pulled out the lunch she'd packed for her journey. Homemade chicken salad sandwiches a thermos of sweet tea, and her famous oatmeal cookies. Here, she said, holding out the food. Please take this, I insist. The woman hesitated, but the hunger in her daughter's eyes won out. Thank you, she said softly, accepting the offering. You're very kind. As the little girl bit into a sandwich, Margaret lowered herself onto a nearby bench. I'm Margaret, she said. And who might you two be? I'm Emily the little girl piped up between bites. And this is my mom, Irene. Irene managed a small smile. It's nice to meet you, Margaret, and thank you again for the food. Think nothing of it, dear, Margaret said warmly. Now why don't you tell me what's troubling you? Sometimes it helps to talk things out with a friendly ear. For a moment, Irene looked ready to refuse, but then, as if a dam had broken, the words came pouring out. She told Margaret about her husband, Andrew, who had taken a job in another city, about the mother-in-law who had made their lives miserable, constantly criticizing and interfering, about the fight that had led to this desperate escape attempt. I just couldn't take it anymore, Irene finished, her voice barely above a whisper. But now, now I don't know where we're going to go. Margaret listened intently, her heart aching for this young family. As Irene's story came to an end, an idea began to form in Margaret's mind. It was crazy, perhaps even foolish, but somehow it felt right. Irene, she said slowly, what would you say if I told you I might have a solution to your problem? Irene looked at her skeptically. What do you mean? Margaret took a deep breath. Well, you see, I have this house, 
Margaret's words hung in the air as Irene and Emily stared at her, their eyes wide with disbelief. A house? Irene repeated, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't understand. Margaret smiled gently, patting Irene's hand. My dear, I was on my way to a nursing home because I could no longer manage my farmhouse on my own. But listening to your story, well, it seems to me that house could be put to much better use with a young family living in it. Emily's eyes lit up. A farm? With animals and everything? Now hold on, Irene interjected, shaking her head. Margaret, that's incredibly generous, but we couldn't possibly... Nonsense, Margaret cut her off firmly. I may be old, but I'm not addled. I know exactly what I'm offering. She leaned in, her voice softening. Irene, that house has been in my family for generations. The thought of it sitting empty, gathering dust, it breaks my heart. But you and Emily, you could bring it back to life. Tears welled up in Irene's eyes. But what about you? Where will you go? Margaret waved her hand dismissively. Oh, I'll be fine at the nursing home. It's time I had some help, truth be told. But you two, you need a fresh start. Just then, Sarah the nurse approached, looking concerned. Mrs. Wilson, we really need to get going. Margaret nodded, then turned back to Irene. What do you say, dear? Will you at least come look at the place? Irene hesitated, torn between hope and disbelief. Finally, she nodded. Okay, she whispered. We'll look. The journey back to Margaret's farmhouse was filled with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Sarah, after some persuasion and a call to her supervisor, agreed to drive them all in the nursing home's van. As they pulled up the gravel driveway, Irene gasped. The old farmhouse, bathed in the warm afternoon light, looked like something out of a storybook. Oh, Margaret, she breathed. It's beautiful. Emily was already bouncing in her seat. Can we go see inside, Mommy? Please? They all climbed out of the van, Margaret moving slowly with her walking stick. As they approached the porch, she bent down with some difficulty and retrieved the key from under the tin can. Welcome home, she said softly, unlocking the door. The interior was modest but charming, filled with well-worn furniture and mementos of a life well-lived. Irene ran her hand along the kitchen counter, taking in the cheerful yellow curtains and the view of the sprawling backyard. I can't believe this, she murmured. It's like a dream. Margaret watched them explore with a bittersweet smile. Now, I know it needs some fixing up, she said. But with a little love and care, it could be a wonderful home for you both. Irene turned to her, tears streaming down her face. Margaret, I don't know how to thank you. This is... it's too much. Nonsense, Margaret replied firmly. All I ask is that you love this place as much as I have. And, she added with a twinkle in her eye, that you let me visit now and then. Emily threw her arms around Margaret's waist. You can visit any time, she declared. Right, Mommy? Irene nodded, wiping her eyes. Of course. Margaret, you'll always be welcome here. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the yard, Margaret knew it was time to go. She handed Irene a folder containing the deed and other important papers. I had my lawyer draw these up a while back, she explained, just in case, well, in case something like this happened. With final hugs and promises to stay in touch, Margaret climbed back into the van with Sarah. As they drove away, she watched Irene and Emily waving from the porch, her porch, until they disappeared from view. The Sunshine Valley Retirement Home was a far cry from Margaret's beloved farmhouse. The sterile hallways and institutional decor made her heart ache for the warmth and character of her old home. But as Sarah showed her to her new room, Margaret squared her shoulders. She had made her choice, and she was determined to make the best of it. Here we are, Mrs. Wilson, Sarah said, opening the door to reveal a small but tidy room with two beds. You'll be sharing with Mrs. Ellen Thompson. She's a lovely lady. I'm sure you'll get along fine. Margaret nodded taking in the sparse furnishings and the lone window overlooking a small courtyard. It wasn't much, but it would have to do. As she unpacked her few belongings, the door opened, and a woman in a wheelchair rolled in. She had a kind face framed by silver hair, and despite her obvious physical limitations, there was a sparkle in her eyes. Well, hello there, she said cheerfully. You must be my new roommate. I'm Ellen, 
Margaret smiled, extending her hand. Margaret Wilson, it's nice to meet you, Ellen. As they chatted, Margaret learned that Ellen had lost the use of her legs in a car accident years ago. But rather than bitter, she seemed determined to find joy in every day. Life's too short to wallow in self-pity, Ellen declared. Now, how about we liven up this room a bit? I've got some lovely floral prints we could hang up. Over the next few days, Margaret settled into her new routine. She attended exercise classes, modified for her arthritis, joined a book club, and even tried her hand at watercolor painting. But every night, as she lay in her narrow bed, her thoughts drifted back to Irene and Emily, wondering how they were faring in her old home. A week after her arrival, Margaret received her first letter. Her hands trembled as she opened the envelope, revealing a childish drawing of a house with three stick figures in front, one tall, one medium, and one small with wild curly hair. Tucked inside was a note from Irene. Dear Margaret, I hope this letter finds you well. We wanted to let you know that we're settling in nicely. Emily loves exploring the backyard, and I've already started planning a vegetable garden for next spring. The house feels more like home every day thanks to your incredible generosity. We miss you and would love for you to visit soon. Emily asks about her Grandma Margaret every day. You've given us so much more than just a house. You've given us hope and a chance at a new life. With all our love, Irene and Emily. Tears blurred Margaret's vision as she read the letter again and again. She may have given up her home, but in return, she had gained something far more precious, a family. Weeks turned into months, and Margaret found herself adapting to life at Sunshine Valley. She and Ellen had become fast friends. Their room transformed into a cozy haven with plants, photographs, and Ellen's artwork adorning the walls. One crisp autumn morning, as Margaret sat in the common room working on a jigsaw puzzle, she heard a commotion in the hallway. Curious, she looked up to see a crowd gathering near the entrance. What on earth? she muttered setting aside her puzzle piece and reaching for her walking stick. As she made her way towards the crowd, she heard a familiar voice that made her heart skip a beat. We're looking for Margaret Wilson. Can someone please tell us where to find her? Margaret pushed through the throng of residents and staff, her eyes widening as she took in the sight before her. There, standing in the middle of the Sunshine Valley lobby, were Irene and Emily, accompanied by a tall, handsome man Margaret didn't recognize. Grandma Margaret, Emily squealed, breaking free from her mother's grasp and running towards her. Margaret opened her arms, enveloping the little girl in a warm embrace. Emily, my dear, what a wonderful surprise. Irene approached, her eyes shining with tears. Margaret, I hope you don't mind us dropping in like this. We have some news we wanted to share in person. It was then that Margaret noticed the matching gold bands on Irene and the unknown man's fingers. Her heart swelled with joy as she put the pieces together. And who might this gentleman be? She asked, a knowing smile playing at her lips. The man stepped forward, extending his hand. I'm Andrew, ma'am, Irene's husband, and I can't thank you enough for what you've done for my family. Margaret clasped his hand warmly. It's wonderful to meet you, Andrew. I've heard so much about you. As they made their way to a quiet corner of the common room, Irene explained how Andrew had tracked them down, how they had reconciled, and how they were now living happily in Margaret's old farmhouse. We've been fixing it up, Andrew said proudly. Repainted the whole exterior. Fixed that leaky roof. It's looking better than ever. Margaret felt a lump form in her throat. I'm so glad, she whispered. That old place deserves a family to love it. Emily tugged at Margaret's sleeve. And guess what, Grandma Margaret? We're going to have a baby. I'm going to be a big sister. Margaret's eyes widened in delight. Oh my, congratulations all of you. This calls for a celebration. As if on cue, Ellen rolled up, balancing a tray of cookies and lemonade on her lap. I thought our guests might like some refreshments, she said with a wink. The rest of the afternoon passed in a blur of laughter, stories, and plans for the future. Margaret's heart felt fuller than it had in years, surrounded by this makeshift family she had somehow acquired. As the visit drew to a close, Andrew cleared his throat. Margaret, we have one more thing to discuss with you. We've been talking and, well, we'd like you to come live with us.
Margaret blinked in surprise. Live with you? But I couldn't possibly. Please, Margaret, Irene interjected. You gave us a home when we had nothing. Now let us return the favor. We've already set up a room for you, right next to the nursery. Tears welled up in Margaret's eyes as she looked around at the eager faces surrounding her. She thought of the farmhouse she had loved for so long, of the family she had unexpectedly gained, of the chance to be part of a child's life again. With a trembling smile, Margaret nodded. Well, she said softly, I suppose it's time for this old bird to fly back to her nest. As they made plans for Margaret's homecoming, she couldn't help but marvel at the twists and turns life had taken. She had thought she was saying goodbye to her old life, but instead, she had found a new beginning, one filled with love, laughter, and the promise of tomorrow. And as she hugged Emily goodbye, promising to see her soon, Margaret knew that the best chapters of her story were yet to be written.